Hi everyone, Robbo here. You're listening to the Blues Focus podcast. Keep right on. Hi guys and welcome back to the Blues Focus podcast. Before we get into today's podcast, I'd just like to give a big shout out to our current patrons. And if you'd like to join these names in the brand new Blues Focus Hall of Fame, uh, you can join our Patreon page for just £1 a month. Perks included um, will be monthly giveaways and early access to guest pods. The link will be in the description anyway for our uh, Patreon packages. But that's enough from me. Let's get straight into today's Blues Focus podcast. Thank you for joining us as always. I remember the, the man of the saying at the time, if you don't take this permanent deal, come the summer, we'll offer you a new contract and you'll be in your own change room and you'll be with the youth team training for the whole summer. And I was just like, wait, what? For what? Because I don't want to do what you want me to do. Support for today's Blues Focus podcast is brought to you by none other than Manscaped. Manscaped specialised in all your below-the-waist grooming needs. They want, they've only just recently landed in the UK, so you could be first one of the first men in the country to even try out their products. So uh, get looking at them now. They're definitely big in other countries. And they finally dropped in the UK. To get 20% off plus free shipping, use the code BLUESFOCUS20 at manscaped.com. Hello and welcome to the Blues Focus podcast with me, your host, John Graham. Once again, many thanks for taking the time to download this pod. And as ever, please remember to subscribe on whatever channel you're either listening or viewing this content. Please make sure that you leave your comments. We always like to debate those over the over the weeks ahead. And also, if you can rate us, it'd be massively appreciated. It does really help us a great deal. In a period of a bit of a lull at the moment, so no, no games to talk of, but, but plenty going on behind the scenes, I guess. So we have got a special guest today, but before I introduce him, uh, Tom, how are you, mate? Good to see you. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm good. Thank you, mate. You? Yeah, yeah not too bad. Missing missing the footy, but uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> what can you do? Uh, and and our, our special guest today, and, and you know, ma- massive thanks for taking time out, out of his schedule. Uh, player that played uh, for Blues, 40 appearances, scoring a couple of goals over a five-year period. Um, very much instrumental in a fantastic academy setup, and graduated from that. So, Viv Solomon Notable, how are you, my friend? Oh, I'm fine, thank you very much. Top man, top man. Um, Viv, so what? What? What we? I think we, we've got a format with lots of our guests because we. What we don't want to do is just focus on as, as much as this is a blues podcast. I yeah. think it's really important to to understand your journey and okay. how you got got into the game. So obviously from London originally, um, yeah. was football always a passion for you growing up? Uh, when I was maybe when I was like three or four or five, I wasn't. I could play because obviously like where I grew up in my state, like everyone always used to kids. You know, it was like back in the day, like we used to play outside and stuff, but like. We was playing outside and obviously some people play football. I'd, I'd play from time to time, but like it wasn't, oh, I'm going to go outside and play football. It wasn't until um, I went on holiday to Nigeria and I was at my grandma's house and like, I saw like all like trophies and stuff in my house, in the in our house. So I was just like asking, I was just curious. I was like, oh, who's, who's is that? Like whose medals are these and that? And she just started laughing. She goes, oh, that's your dad's. Obviously my dad didn't come with me and my mum at the time. So I remember I was like, no, it's not my, my dad's. No, no. And then she was like, yeah, it is. So then I was like, all right, cool. Mom, call dad right now. So then my mom, mom's called my dad. I remember it was like yesterday. My mom's called my dad. And I was like, oh, dad, like, so he was a professional footballer. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, all right, cool. As soon as I get back, I want Astro Turfs to play outside. I want like a new top. I want a football kit, basically. And I remember as soon as we got to the airport, we went to, at the time, it was called Sports World, Sports Direct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Went straight to Sports World. And that was it. That's how it started, literally. Then I was just every day, just football fanatic. So, what what kit did you go for to to open up with? Was it? You, it was. Run? It was crazy. I think I had. I think it was a Chelsea kit. You know, I don't know why. Wow. It was a Chelsea <laughs> kit. I don't know why. I had some like I don't know. It was like a long sleeve tight. I remember, it was like umbro. It was tight around the neck. I, mean, I don't know why. I just said, "Oh, get me Chelsea." Like I don't know why I said that, but then he got it for me. But yeah, it was mad. That was like maybe yeah, you just knew your time. collar was going to be blue. <laughs> <laughs> So 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 after that was it sort of obviously started playing quite a bit and then did you play for your school was that the first sort of yeah, serious um, football you played or did you join a team or how did it go? Well, I joined like a, um, a you know like a, a little league yeah near my house and more than more than little league it was well I think I was I, I did under eights there uh, under eights nine and ten 
And then I remember for the last year of year six, I didn't play for a team. I just used to do like after school football, like every, I think it was like every Wednesday and Friday at school. And then from there, then I went to Tooting and Mitcham for under 11s. And that's when it kind of like under 12s. And that's when it kind of said, okay, cool. That's when I was kind of like in the, obviously it wasn't a professional, but it was like, Sunday league, like a good Sunday league, Surrey league. So like, it was like the best, it was like the best before academy. So like, that's why yeah. I was playing. And then, yeah, like that's, that's when it started. I've done under, under 12s, under 13s, under 14s. And then under 15s was with, like, where I really got like my trial to like, try and obviously go to like an academy at the, at the time then. So, so when when you obviously you obviously you found out that your dad was a was a, a decent footballer himself, when when you sort of said right, this is what I want to be, was it was it very much was he was he supportive of you? Is it something that obviously he he'd done incredibly well, or, or you know we we always sort of talking about you you making it? Yeah, and um, he just said like from from when I said uh, when I, as I was getting older, he just said look, if this is what we do, what you want to do, me and obviously me and my mum. My, him and my mum they said they'll, they'll support you we'll go with you all the way it's yeah. just as long as you're, like, you're doing alright in school if this is what you really want to do this way you want to like tr- try and achieve then yeah we'll, we're with you behind like 100% so they were they were always they always supported me took me to like train and stuff I remember like there'll be times like my mum would have to get my um get me from school with my sisters then straight from school we're drive, she, she's driving to drop me to like training then she's waiting there and like, she's got my little sister like in the car and that. And then wait for me to finish training, then we go home. And then it was just like it just supported me so much. It was it was good. Like all the fun times, good times. Yeah. I, I do you know what? There's a, a lot of players that we've been re- really lucky to speak to, to lots of players from different sort of generations from you know that have played for blues over the years. Yeah. And it does seem to be a real continual theme around parents having to drive pretty much all over the country just to take the lads to you know, to train okay, into yeah. games that really does help them get to ultimately, you know, to become that pro football player. Yeah. It really is important to have that support, isn't it? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. So, so those sort of times, you you get into that sort of academy, sort of age group and level. Was it Palace that you sort of initially sort of involved with? How did that sort of play so, out with the lots of clubs? So basically, yeah, no, so yeah, so I was with. So we was originally two in the Mitchum. And then we changed our age group and so our age group and the older age group, we changed to Hampton and Richmond Borough. Yeah. And then we went over to Hampton and Richmond and I done, I think under 13s that season, I was like 20, 2008 or something like 2008 and nine. And then um, under 15s, I remember my friend was playing for uh, Wiccan Wanderers at the time. Okay. And he went to my school. Obviously he knew I was good, but Obviously, back then, it's not like now, like, so difficult to, like, get a trial or to get scouted. Yeah. It's difficult those times. So, obviously, we knew, like, I knew I was good and stuff. Like, my school, my, my, I remember my sports teacher used to try and help say, look, when there's, like, a next, like, open trial or ch- at Chelsea or, like, somewhere, like, I'll try and, like, recommend you. So, I remember yeah. he was, like, it was a summer holidays, 2000 and... 2009. Summer holidays, 2010. No, sorry, summer holidays, 2010. So he was like, it was precinct. He's like, yo, um, I'm going to call my Wiccan manager, go. Like, tell your dad to drop you. They said you can come and train. So I was like, you sure? He was like, yes. I remember my dad dropped me. I remember I trained there and smashed it. So then, um, like, this is the dedication. Like, I remember. So, yeah. So then uh, I was training there, playing match. I think I was 14. I was playing like the under 16s at the time. I was just playing, 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 playing. And then, so then I'd play with Wickham as a trialist go back, play for, like, my Sunday team on a Sunday. So I played with Wickham on the Saturdays with the under-16s. I got kicked for the, for the match. Played in, and then Sunday, play with my um, Sunday league team. And then, um, like, I was doing it for ages, ages. And they're like, yeah, we're going to sign you. We're going to sign you. And obviously, my friend was, um, he was, at the time, obviously, he was good. So obviously, he was on the verge of leaving Wickham because I think he was on the verge of leaving at the time. So I remember it was just like, look, like, if they're taking long to sign you, then... You've got to do what you've got to do, but like, just keep coming. So I remember they're like, yeah, like every other week they were like, yeah, we've got your training kit ready and stuff. So I'd be getting excited. But, <laughs> but <laughs> obviously, and then, um, so then there was one time when obviously they, I think like some of the players that were like 16 at the time, they were like all coming back from like injuries and like more players were like coming. So then one game I didn't get picked for the under 16s. I was under, so I was under 15s at the time. So I didn't get picked. 
So I remember we had uh, AFC Wimbledon on Sunday. So I went to play with my Sunday league team. They so done well. Then I just got scouted by Chelsea, literally. Like out oh, from right. nowhere. Literally, <laughs> yeah. So then the Chelsea scout was just like to me, um, Ray Rembridge was like, um, yeah, like, um, just come and see me after the game. I was like, like, as I was, like, I remember, you know, like Sunday league, you could come off and come on. Yeah, so yeah. I came off for like 10 minutes and then you come and just said, you pulled me. I was like, look, come see me after the game. I need to speak to you. So I was like, okay, cool. So then went to speak to him, gave me the card and he said, um, tell your mum to, um, tell your dad or your, and your mum to like, give me a call. And obviously my um, my friend's dad that was like taking me because at the time my dad was in Nigeria because my sister had gone to school over there. So he was like helping us settle. And obviously, um, my friend's dad was kind of like, and my uncle was kind of like in, you know, like in charge because my mum kind of knew, but she didn't really know. So then she called. I remember like, we called him. He was like, yeah, um, I've been tracking Viv for like three years. We've been wow. watching the development. And I feel like now's the time that he's ready. And he was right. It was so right. So then, yeah, I went. I went. I think I was there. I was at Chelsea on trial for about six months, like doing everything. I was, I was so close to signing, but I didn't sign. Anyway, anyway, so then... Uh, when you when you go to on trial those type of clubs, like they even like to you. It's even good that you don't sign because of like the the um, the the rate of like how many players actually make it through anyway. So yeah. like it's better for you to like kind of go in. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. So they gave me like a list of clubs to go for. So I remember the Chelsea scout was like, look, um, Crystal Palace would be good for you. Crystal Palace, I think it was Crystal Palace. Yeah, he was like, Crystal Palace would be good for you. So I was like, okay, okay. So then we rang them up. Um, the coach, the under 15s coach at the time, Ben Garner. It was a Bristol, he just left Bristol Rovers like a like couple months ago. So I remember we called them and I remember I played, we played a, a game against um, Palace like a couple of weeks and I don't want to score. So it's like, oh, is that the, the the young, the right winger that tried this? Like, yeah, so like, bring him in. So then I went in and then, yeah, it was crazy. Like the first session, I don't know, it was like something was in me, like just getting a ball from the goalkeeper or running through everyone, like it was crazy. So I signed straight away for two years. And yeah, that's how, that's like literally that was like my first. Obviously, I had a little taste at Chelsea, but like you know, like actually like being signed and then like yeah. you're actually part of something. You have the track, so you have the kit. Like that was Christopher was like my first ever academy. That was when I was under 15s. So that just goes to show, like when you're like nine, it doesn't matter if you're not in academy from nine to like 15. Like it, it can come at any time. To be fair, so yeah, yeah. So I mean, it, th- th- I think that's a bit big sort of lesson in in sort of perseverance, I guess, because yeah. yeah. You just never know, do you? You never know. Um, so, so obviously, spent a bit of time at Palace, and then you know, I think you offered a scholarship at Birmingham. Is that how it sort of came about? Yeah. So basically, it was uh, yeah, it's crazy. So um, like it's weird. Like it's like different stages in my life. It's like I always go get like to a, like a, a point where like there's always like an obstacle I have to like almost surpass to get to yeah. the, in the next stage. So then. I remember, like, I was probably, you know what? I was probably, the, I was the best in my in my age group. And I remember we had a meeting with me and my dad. We had a meeting with Ben. Uh, this is at Crystal Palace. So, like, the, so I signed maybe in, in January. And then, you know, like, you know, when you're young, you have, like, reviews at the end of the season. So yeah. my review was literally, okay, cool. You're going to get a scholarship. Everything's sorted. But, you know, when you move age groups, you move with different coaches. Right. So then... We moved, I moved up to under, obviously under 16s with a different coach and it was just completely different. I was still doing well, but obviously, I don't know, he just had his favourites at the time. And them days, anything could go on in football. So I remember it comes to decision time and I was thinking, okay, cool, I've got my decision today. So I remember I went to Crystal Palace, to, you know, like in London, I don't know if they have the big athletics place, Crystal yeah. Palace, that's where we used to train. So I remember we've gone there and then, they like to me, oh no, Viv, we need to like um you're not getting you're not gonna have a meeting today. We're gonna we we still wanna assess you like after like three, four more games. So I was just like, okay, cool. So then I remember I was playing, doing well and everything, and then it was Portsmouth, we played Portsmouth away, and I remember I was doing well, and then I just got subbed at half time. I remember I was sitting there in tears, I was just so angry, I was like, like I was upset. So I just said to my dad, look, like let's just call the meeting now, let's cut it short. So then we done that. The guy said, no, nah. the guy said, no, nah, we're not giving you a scholarship. I said, thank you very much. Like, thank you for the opportunity, everything. I remember I sent them a text, like, as soon as I um, left the training ground, sent them a um, sent them a, um, a text, like, to the coaches and that, just to say thank you for everything. And then just, I remember, then I went to an exit trial. So then I went to an exit trial 
And like, you know, like that's like the showcase game where like yeah. all the all the clubs and that are there. And funny enough, Crystal the, the coach was there. So I remember I played, I've killed it. So I remember like um scouts were speaking to my dad at the time, Derby, I think it was Derby County, another one. And I remember I finished and then the Crystal Palace guys were like to me, oh, oh Viv, you're right, you're coming to training on Thursday. I just looked at him like, are you serious? Like, you, you know, just remember what you just said to me like last week. So then I was just, I was like, yeah. So then um, from, I remember Birmingham scouted me from there. And then, yeah, that's how it started. I went to Birmingham and then done a session there. And then, yeah, um, yeah, done a session with Birmingham. And then, yeah, sign. And then, yeah, it was this, I had this between like three other clubs to sign. But the relationship that Birmingham had with my school as well, like the way they communicated and everything. Like, it was just yeah. so professional. So, like, my school was, like, so... Because I went to, like, a strict Catholic school, so it was wow. very rare that you're allowed to, like, leave school for sports. Yeah. So, like, yeah. The, the, the relationship that they had, they they built, and, like, how they were communicating with my school, like, my school was just like, yeah, these like, are the real deal. Like, they've, like, they seem to really like you. So then I was just like, yeah. And then I remember they offered me the scholarship. I remember I had it in my... I remember Blues, yeah, played a match against Norwich, and then they offered me the scholarship in the office. I remember Christian Speaksman... I remember I sat, because when I was young, I was very shy, so I was just sat down like this, like, head down. <laughs> <laughs> I was sat in the office, head down, and then they called my dad from Nigeria. They're like, yeah, um, um, they want to, we want to offer your son a scholarship. Dad was happy, excited, like, job done for now. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's yeah, the kind yeah. of job done. Yeah. So then, yeah, like, that, that's when that's when it started, and then, yeah, that's how the um, the journey began. Viv, and, just, yeah. just, just on what you said there, which I think shows... It's probably, it's probably, you know, down to your, to your upbringing more, more than anything else. The fact that you'd been, to want of a better phrase, shafted by Palace, and you know they'd, you know, probably strung you along, and you know you've been really humble and said, you know, thanks for the opportunity. Um, I, I guess we were you raging. I mean, it must have been so disappointing. Yeah, like, you know, you know, you know, it is like you know when you because I already had the. It wasn't a disappointment because at the same time, you know, like your first ever trial was Chelsea and you're a young kid. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So like you go into that training complex and it's just a complete different world. So yeah. then to, to experience that and it's like everybody knows you're at, on, at, you're at school, everybody at your school knows oh, you're on trial. They see you getting picked up from school. And then it's not pressure, but it's just like, you know, like everyone will just, there's that all eyes on you kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, so yeah. Then, after that, that wasn't. It wasn't. It was. A, that was a, just a grateful experience, to be honest. Like I wasn't. I was hurt. Don't. I was hurt. I was hurt because you're young. Any young boy would be hurt. Do you know yeah, what I mean? exactly. You'll be hurt. You'll be upset. You'll be cross. But then it's just how you bounce back. So I remember I was just like, you know, no, like I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna go somewhere else. I'm gonna get signed because ultimately, this is this is the pathway to, this is the pathway to professional footballers. So like the little setbacks now I can't really. It's not really gonna affect you if you deal with it correct because yeah. ultimately there's more there's more to gain in the long run. For sure. So then, um, yeah. So then, uh, what was I gonna say? Sorry. Yeah. So then the Palace one was just like like I remember. So I remember I told my PE teacher I was just like yeah I think a scholarship. I remember I was so weird. I remember going in. The, I remember I was in the um, in the canteen and all the youth team boys. They're like, oh, you got your meeting? I'm like, yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, you're sweet. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? They're like, you're yeah. sweet. Like, yeah, you're calm. Like, you're good. And I was just like, bro, like, I was just like to them, like, there's something funny. Like, I, and then I remember, like, walking past Dougie Freeman to go to the, obviously I was young, so he wouldn't know me, but I remember literally walking past Dougie to go to the meeting and then have the meeting with him. I said, no, I was, I was just thinking, I left. And then I was just like, you know what? Then from there, it was just like, look, the mindset was, I'm just going to prove these lot. I'm just going to prove whoever made that decision to say no. I know it's not football reasons, but I'm going to prove them wrong. Do you know what I mean? So then, yeah. So then when I went to Birmingham, the plan was ultimately I'm just going to watch. You you will see kind of thing. That was my that was my my game like my head my game like you you will see you're yeah. going to see. Me. Do you know what I mean, definitely. So, I think just just quickly as well. Like what? How did that relief feel when you got that scholarship? Because I can imagine it oh, being quite yeah, emotional because yeah. you'd finally got what you you wanted for a while. Yeah, no, it was um, it was crazy. Like, I remember, I think it was crazy, like because you know, like you think about it, it's me. I remember in my year we had a lot of talented players in my school, and like to be that only one in your year group to get that, or even in. Like let's say the year being in year eleven and year ten, 
and you're the only one in your school, and then maybe there might be another one in like year seven, year eight. That's, do you know what I mean? So like, yeah. So it's and he's the big. only one in his year. So it's crazy. So it's just it's difficult in itself. So like it was just oh it was just it was a relief like you know like your parents can like just finally relax again. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Because it's you know, they, like my mum and dad are really relieved, relaxed. But it's like okay, cool, you've got this now. Now you've got to go again, kind of thing. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Next. You, step, you haven't yeah. made nothing. There's nothing, and this, that was the. I feel like the two years being a scholarship is probably the hardest thing in football for okay. me personally. So, so as just, a young yeah. Yeah. So, so, so on that, you obviously you, you signed for Birmingham. What what? Did you move up? How, how did it how did it play out in those first couple of years? What was the transition like? Yeah, so first first when I was so because I signed when I was still in school, I used to yeah. do school. I used to go to school till Wednesday, then I'd go to travel to Birmingham Thursday, train Thursday, train Friday, play Saturday, and then travel back and go to school Monday. Wow! So then yeah, we I was doing that, and then obviously when it came to preseason, I, I finally moved up into Diggs. I was right next to the training ground. So, yeah, that was a transition, yeah. So I, just, I moved, I moved up how, myself. How did, you find, how did you find it when you moved into Diggs? Was it sort of, were you ready for it? Or is it, is it obviously, we, again, when we speak to players, everybody seems to go through that and everybody's got a different story. So how, how did yeah. you handle it? For me, like, it was, like, you know, it was weird because all I knew was London. Do you yeah. Know, all I knew was London and... And uh, my friends and obviously my school friends. So then when it's like, oh, you move, like you're in digs. I don't know anybody in Birmingham. I'm not, this is not my see. I'm not from here. I know my teammates and I was still kind of getting to know everybody. Yeah. Because I, still, cause I was obviously away. I'd come and I'd go and I'd come and I'd go. So then like, it, was, it, was, it was difficult at the start. But obviously the people who looked after us in digs, they were fine. It was just... Okay, cool. Going to training was I loved it because you're training, you're doing what you love, you're there every day. It's like ooh, I feel like okay, cool, I'm on, on the road to trying to make it as a professional footballer. And then it's like when you get back to digs, it's like okay, what am I going to do now? <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah. It's kind of just a waiting game, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, at that it's point, it's like when's the next training session? Like yeah. that's that's crazy. And I mean, the schedule you had at such so such a young age, like to kind of deal with that how, how was that like was it a problem did were there times where you just felt like you couldn't do it anymore or were you just oh, completely man. comfortable and rode it rode it out the best obviously way? those times those times where it's like you know like when i'd get the train i'll get the train home so let's say i get the train home saturday and i've got to get the train back sunday so i'm not even home for literally 24 hours and it's like yeah oh like oh, i wish i could just play for a London team and then I'll just be at home like, just stuff like that would go through your mind but then when you get the train and you go back and then you train you're like oh, yeah do you know what I mean and then but once I got used to everything oh sweet perfect started getting like more comfortable around the training ground speaking more like open like just opening up and speaking to more people and then I was fine but it was just like the first six seven months was a bit difficult but yeah. as I got over that then yeah I was, I was ready I was good to go and it started showing on the pitch yeah, definitely. And who who was your sort of the, the, the main sort of coach for you at Blues when you when you were first start you start, started to really get into that sort of the whole swing of things in your scholarship and beyond? Uh, uh, Steve Spooner and Gareth Holmes, they okay. were the um, and Christian Speetsman. Obviously, he was the academy um, manager at the time. Yeah, and um, yeah, Christian, Steve Spooner, and Gareth Holmes. Yeah, they, they were our coaches. They were very good coaches. To be fair. Very, very, very good coaches. Well, Steve, Steve's obviously still still there. Um, so, so, and just on that, so that that sort of group of players that you were with when you first got to got to Blues, who 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 were you with? Who who was in that sort uh, of side in your age group? My age, I think my age was one of the best. It was uh, me, Reese Brown, Damari Gray, Josh Cogley, Con Truman, uh, Bobby Mosley, uh, Bobby Mosley. Uh, Kobe Arthur, yeah, uh, um, Leon Truslove, Nathaniel Kelly, Callum Preston, another goalkeeper. Uh, 
you know, as in like my yeah, my first year. Yeah. Uh, I mean, to be fair, Viv, that that's decent, isn't it? That there's at least seven <laughs> or eight deep. players there that did flirt with the first team at one point at Blues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a this that's crazy. The amount of quality in that squad, to be fair, yeah, could yeah. Uh, actually get somewhere in the football league. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Viv, I'm, I'm gonna ask I'm gonna ask a question because I, I asked it to Richard Beals and, it, and it's it's a bit of a personal one. So, um, you mentioned Reese Brown. So I, w- there was a period for about, I don't know, about six months when he broke into the first team. And I actually thought he was, I, he's one of the, one of the best young players I've seen at Blues. Oh, what definitely. was it like when he was a kid? Was it, I mean, I, I still think he's a fabulous player. We should never have got rid of him, to be honest. But what was he like when he, were you sort of going through the, I guess the, the ranks with him? So when I was, I remember when I first came to Birmingham and I was, I was still in school and I remember I met him and that was, he was small. But, like on the ball, it's just crazy. Like he was playing, like the way he played, the way he plays, he plays as if he's, he plays as if he's playing like on the streets. Yeah. But smart, do you know what I mean? Like it's it's weird. So like he'd be playing centre midfield, but and centre midfield that's a, a an important like role to play in in a team. Obviously, he, it was just like he just well, technical ability very good, can dribble, he's very strong as well. You can't really get him off the ball. Mm. And he's quick thinking as well. He can thread a ball, thread a ball through, can shoot, can score. You know, it's just, he's an all-round talented player. Like it's just a gift. Yeah, he's just a gifted player. No, he, I mean it, it. Definitely, that definitely shone shone out. I think when he when he broke yeah. in. But going, but going back to so we, 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 sort of two thousand and fourteen, you, you sort of went out to Oxford City. If yeah, you, and, and how yeah. was that? Because obviously that's really bringing the develop your development forward. Was, was that useful for you? Did you learn a lot? Yeah, so, um, yeah, because at the time, I remember, you know, like, it got to a point where, like like I said, as I got comfortable, more comfortable, and I was able, my ability was just able to show more, and I got more comfortable, and I got more confident, and I was just, I was just, like, killing youth team. I was just playing so well. So it got to the point where they were like, okay, cool, like, this this boy needs a challenge now. Like, let's, let's throw him in men's football. Obviously, Obviously, I wasn't going to break into the first team at the time. So, obviously, um, uh, yeah, so then they were like, oh, let's, um, let's send him out alone. So, they sent me to Oxford City. And, yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, it was a surreal experience. I remember, like, going to training, players, guys are coming from work, from, like, from college to train. And, like, it was three points, three points or nothing. And it was just, it was, it was that, it was, it, I needed that. It was good for me to just get stronger or get quicker and just, just get like, it was just, it was like, okay, cool, I'm in a men's game now. And it was, it was what I needed to be fair. Because obviously the youth team was good and stuff like that. But then we hadn't really had nothing to play for at the time when I went. So yeah. it was good to go out and finally try and experience that side of things before like moving into like the development squad and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, did anybody dish dish plenty out to you when it, when you're at Oxford City? Some of the oh, yeah, yeah. Maybe, uh... yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Every like, yeah, every other week, yeah, like it was that it was uh yeah, it was brutal. It was brutal them days, but at the same time, it was good because then when I yeah. went back to Blues and then I trained with the first team and then players are kicking me, I wouldn't get up and be complaining or anything. I just get back up and just say, yeah, give me the ball again. Let me go and get John. So it was it was very good. It was very good. It was a good experience for me at the time. So, so around about that that sort of time, we, we'd sort of gone through the obviously Lee Clark, uh, who, who was on the pod a few a few a few weeks ago, and very honest about his time at Blues and how difficult it was with just various stuff going on behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, so, so when he left and Gary Rowett came in, obviously that was about the time where. You were you were knocking the door, if, if not kicking it off the hinges. You were you were very very close. Yeah. But so how, how did you get on with Gary? Was the did 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 he so were you recommended fairly early on, and did he have a you know decent chat with you? So before like even like with Lee Clark, like Lee Clark was um I remember like Lee Clark was good with us young like when we were kids. I remember like 16, 17. Like, he used to he used to make he used to make us so like you know when you was young you have to um. You have to like go and get the equipment. Yeah, yeah. He would make like Reese. Like Reese would go and watch. We would go and watch like the first team, and just watch to see what they're doing. And yeah. then like, 
we'll just be learning, like just watching. He'll be like, you lot, like stand and watch. We'll just be watching. And like one time, I think one time he was like, I'll reach, join in. Or like sometimes from, yeah, it was, so he, like he was good. I remember there was one time, I think it was 2014, I was doing well in preseason. And he actually said to me, look, if you keep going on like this, you're, you're going to be in at some point. Like if I can, and like to hear that when you're 17, you're thinking, okay, cool. Like this guy, like trust kids and like trust young players and stuff like that. So like Lee Clark was was good for like obviously us young ones, and obviously at his time he brought through Kobe, brought through Damari Gray, and who's that? Uh, and Reese. Yeah, to be fair, so he also like, got the best out of yeah. Ravel Morrison, who not yeah. not many people have been able to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that yeah? So Reese, I remember we used to watch Revo, uh, We used to watch Revo because some of the things he used to do, we would just want to see it again, and he would do it again and again and again. We'd just be thinking, "Oh my god, this guy's just this guy's on a different planet." Like even um, who else? We had we just had like every like the squad then was just it was a very good squad. So we just used to just learn and just watch. And then like if he was doing well with your age group at the time, and they'll do like a round robin or something, you'll get you'll be picked in sessions. You get get to go over and train. So that was good then. So then, yeah, as um, Gary Rowett came in, um, I was like, yeah, I was, I was doing it all right. I remember I was doing well. And then um, I got, he sent, I remember he spoke to me. It was like, um, Kidderminster, do you want to go to Kidderminster? I was like, yeah, I don't yeah. mind. So I remember I went to Kidderminster for one week to, um, to train, to, to do a loan to end the season. So then... Um, but un- unfortunately, that didn't, like, go ahead. So then I came back to Berm. He just said to me, look, um, I want you in and around the building. Just continue to play with under 23s and do well. And then when we come back in the summer, we can kind of, like, review things and then see where, like, where you're at. So then I just literally just continued with the under 21s and just try to, every game, just try to, to play my best, really, and which I was doing. Yeah. And then obviously coming back to preseason, standing myself with a chance, but also... Not getting a chance, I feel like I was kind of ready for a league loan anyway at that time. Yeah, yeah. And and, and sort of round about that time, obviously, Damari was, he'd gone from, you know, I guess some a young lad breaking into the team to somebody that was obviously uh, somebody a bit special to, to tearing up the scene. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and obviously, he moved on, which I think probably gave you, I think it's probably fair to say, passing of your, the torch. Your, yeah, your chance. So, what did you feel about that, you know, from a pressure point of view? Uh, and when, when he left? Yeah, because there was obviously a gap and, and I guess you were probably in the, the next cab on the rank, as they it say. definitely yeah, gave like, you your pathway into the squad. Yeah, so I remember, um, so before, I think I kind of broke in when he was ready, when he was still here. Think, yeah. Yeah, he was still here. So I was like in and around it and stuff and then coming on, coming off the bench and that and getting starts. So then when he left, no, there was no pressure. I just like, I just wanted to um just just play because I remember I think I just signed a new contract because I was I was caught in two minds whether to to sign to extend. I think I had uh, my contract was finishing that season, so then though we wasn't like in talks of like signings. I remember Demi Demari, Demi was like to me, like I'm going, I'm going. I was like You're going. I was like I was like what? Are you actually gonna leave? Like because he's like yeah, yeah I'm gone. Like, it's done. So obviously I was just like oh my god, like congratulations. Then I remember I was just like, yeah, okay, cool. Like, um, now this is kind of a leeway for me to kind of show as well. And so then, yeah, yeah, I remember like I got, I think I played like the first, started the first four or five, done well. And then, yeah, I think the manager, then the manager just brought in like another experienced player. And then from there, it was just, it was just one of those one, one of those things where it's just like, kind of like, kind of just learn. And then if you get your chance, kind of thing. It was just, it was weird. Like it was a weird experience. It was it was Jack Magoma who he brought in um, at the time, wasn't no. it? I think. Yeah, no, it was Will Buckley. Oh, Will Jack, Buckley. Jack's, yeah, no, I remember yeah, Will Buckley. <laughs> Jack, yeah, Jack's was already there. Mags was already there. Yeah, he yeah. brought in. I think Will Buckley came as well. Yeah, so we had the kind of like an experienced squad as well. We had yeah. James Vaughan, Clayton Donaldson, um, John Terrell, um, obviously Magoma and Will Buckley as well, and Lafferty. So oh, yeah, yeah Kyle. Bit, yes, at that time. So it was a bit, yeah, it was, there was a lot of experience in there. So it, was, it wasn't difficult, but obviously at the same time, you can't understand, especially at that time where you're, and that age that you're, you're at. Yeah. But I was still like knocking the door and training and stuff and like, like training well to, to kind of compete at them times as well. 
Yeah, and you know, in fairness to, you, to yourself, obviously in that fifteen sixteen season, you won the uh, you know sort of best young player sort of award. Young player season, yeah. yeah. What 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 did what did that mean to you? Were you expecting it? You know, was that really a a big boost for you? Uh, yeah, like obviously coming through the academy, and obviously like especially with the journey journey and like the journey that I had, especially at Blues, especially like in the like obviously the youth system, youth system, and then obviously to break through and then to get an award like that, it just shows like all the hard work. And it's not only for me, like the staff that I worked with all like over the years. Yeah. And, and for them to see you like win that, like it was just, it was just a surreal experience. It was, it was great for me to be honest. Like I was so happy. Me and my family it was like, it was another big achievement for me. Gradu- yeah. Like it's like graduating from an academy and then to obviously to get granted with that award as well. Was was great for me. Yeah. Well. And I have to ask, by the way, how did it feel completely ripping apart that Fulham side to score your first blues goal? Like you oh, literally yeah. waltzed through them. That was class. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I re- I re- yeah, it was oh uh, yeah. I remember um, I remember just getting the ball and then just running and running. And I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm going myself. Yeah. Like and then I remember he was like, Come on then, like, what are you gonna do? Come on then. <laughs> and I was just like, and I remember I was just looking at him, and then I remember I went to go left, and then shot back, and then shot, and it went in, and it was just like, oh my days! Like, it was the roar was it was crazy. Like that was the first, like the roar was just ugh, can't even explain it to this day. Like sometimes when I watch it, I still get goosebumps on watching it. Like the roar was just I never heard a roar like that in my life. It was my <laughs> and then, yeah, the, the, yeah, it was it was crazy. Yeah, it was probably one of my best goals to be fair. The scenes were good, yeah. I remember the celebration and everything. Yeah. It was just all class. Yeah, yeah, it was good. And my parents, my friends, because it was in London, so my friends were there. My mum my mom and dad were there. My uncle was there. And I remember my friend came late, so he was in the Fulham stand. Yeah. So he saw me score that goal. And like, he, he oh, was just like, oh, my dick. Like, he was going... He was he, like he was going crazy, but at the same time, like he couldn't. So he tried to. I remember he tried to like hop over like the stands to get round, but the security guard was like, no. So then he had to leave the stadium, come back round, and like wait until like we get out. And it was just, it was just a crazy day. To be honest. It was a good day. Yeah, Obviously, yeah. big win as well. I think it was like five something. Five, yeah, I think one, it was five two five. in the end. Yeah, yeah, it was five. I scored five that day, so yeah, it was good. Definitely. So th- th- around about that time, obviously, it, it was going go you know, great guns, won the award, you know, breaking into the, you know, you, you played, started a lot of games in and around it. And then I guess at the end of, uh, a, a, of sort of 16, Gary Rowett sort of leaves the club. I mean, oh, sorry. What, that's all right, mate. What, what, what was that like for you? I mean, because it was, it was unbelievable from the outside. I mean, we, we talk about it regularly that, you know, you, we always remember where we you were. You know where you were when it happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We was, um, yeah, it was cra- we was in the playoffs. We were six. We beat Ipswich yeah. the night before. I remember I, I was on the bench that day, I remember. And then we come in the next day and then they were like, oh, the gaffer was like, um, the gaffer was like at the time, oh, we, I need to see you lot. So I was just thinking, yeah, normal meeting kind of thing. Obviously, the young players, I was young, so obviously, even though I was still like in the first team dressing room, I still go to like the under twenty one change room to just like yeah. chill because obviously I was twenty. Yeah. So then, yeah. So obviously, so then obviously got called, so I've run to the meeting where I was there, and he's just gone. Lads, I've been sacked. <laughs> we're like what? I was like, what? like, what do, you, what do you mean you've been sacked? He goes, yeah, like obviously the club want to go in a different direction and stuff like that, and it was just mad. Like I remember just sitting there thinking. Wow, like, like even when you're doing such a great job, like things can just change. It was just, and I remember like going to see him in his office, and then him and Saley, his assistant, they were like, "It's your time, carry on now. We we believed in you. Now it's your time. Just keep going. Like, just keep doing well. Keep working hard. It'll work out for you." And I was, like, I was just thankful. I just yeah. said thank you very much for like giving me the opportunity me and like believing in me. And give me the chance to obviously play in the first team and stuff like that. But it was, yeah, it, it, it didn't hit. It, it, it took a toll on everyone for a long time when yeah. they got sacked. It did. And then obviously the new manager came in and everything, everything was just trying to change a bit too fast and stuff. So it was just one of those, it was just weird. That like, was the first, you know, like as a young player, that was the first kind of time I've ever experienced anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a bit, so it was, yeah, it was, it was tough. It was tough, very tough. How emotional was that dressing room when he told, uh, obviously announced to everyone that he was leaving the club. 
Oh, like it was so emotional because it's like, obviously his formula was, if you work hard and you outrun everyone and with your quality, you will win games. So obviously from when like they, um, he took over, like you could just see straight away, like the diff- the difference in training was like was immense. Like the the the, um, the intense training just went up. Like we used to run because we used to do the same runs as them. Yeah, yeah. Like the runs were just like, <laughs> so, so. Just in case if you go over there, you're ready. So like like the runs were just like so intense. But obviously once once you like got used to them, it was obviously it was good for you and you'd feel fit. So like all all like what all his um formula and everything that he taught us. Like everybody, it was just instilled in everyone, and then instilled in everyone, and then, and to to be where we was at that time in the league as well. The the, the boys were doing well, like it was six, and obviously for that to happen, of course, it's gonna have a little mental defect on everyone. At the time, it was yeah. tough. Like it was, yeah, 100%. it was. It was tough, man. It was tough, but yeah, it's just, it's just football, isn't it? Like football is an unpredictable game, so it's like, yeah, and it's so sad because it's like that thing happens, where it's like, okay, cool, the next day. It's like a whole new chapter, and it's like okay, cool. You got to channel your mind to, to then doing what you got to do day in, day and out to then perfect it on a Saturday. So it's like you're trying to obviously have a, a good mindset and and obviously work hard and everything, but at the same time you're thinking, oh my god, like I think I've just got sad. So like you just have to kind of move on from it and and just come continue with your job and like work hard and obviously yeah. So, yeah. so when when Zola came in, did he did he sort of was it just a sort of a group conversation when he sort of you know just sort of laid out how he wanted to play and what it was going to be like, or did, did you manage to have a one to one? As because at that point, you know, you you you've absolutely nailed down as a first team member yeah. without a shadow of a doubt. So did did he take you to one side and, and give you any sort of I guess comfort that you know you you're in his plans or or not? Uh, so when um, the manager came in. Like, he was a very nice guy, very, very, very nice guy. Good manager as well, to be fair. He like, he just uh, he just said to me that, he didn't actually say to me that, you, you're in my plans. He was just like, look, you're a very talented young player. Like, I, I want you here. Just continue to work hard and do well. So I remember from, from when he first came in, he was teaching me how to play as a striker. Okay. Because, because he saw the qualities I had. Um, like like holding up the ball and stuff like that. He said, "I feel like you've got more to your game than just playing out wide. I feel like you can you can play in the middle as well." So then I remember for a couple of training, like for a couple of weeks, I was training in the striker position and stuff, which was good. But then I remember like we like I just wanted to play. I was hungry. Like I just wanted to just play, just kick yeah. on now because it's like I experienced it the year before, and then it's just like now I'm just. Training, just want more. Coming, yeah, I like, just want more. Like, I'm training, coming on here and then, and if I don't get enough minutes, enough to go back and play with the under twenty threes, and then like prove myself again, keep showing that yeah, look, I'm I'm kind of better than this level. I'm, I'm ready to, for the step up. So it was difficult. I remember one time I just knocked on his door and I just said, "Look, um, Gaffer, please, like, like, is there any way I can go out and play football? Obviously, I'm not trying to say that." I don't want to work hard and play here. I want to play here, but obviously if the opportunity is not going to come. Like, I need to. Play, uh, I just want to play. I just want professional football. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But... So then he was just like, "No." Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, no, you're not. You're not going nowhere. You're not allowed to. Like, wow. you're my plan. He was just like, "You're my plans. You're not going nowhere. You're. I want you in around your hip." So then I was just like, "Okay, cool." So then training, 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 training. And I think I got one start against Newcastle in the FA Cup and I played as a striker, but it wasn't my position. I never played, especially in a game like that. Yeah. I remember it was weird. Shay Adams was playing on the right. I was playing in the middle. And like, I was just thinking, bro, like, let's just swap. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, it was, I was just so, yeah. And then, well, it's football. It's football's, the, yeah, like I said, football's a weird game. So it is what it is, yeah. So I remember... <laughs> We played at Blackburn, wasn't in the squad. Me and Reese, no, I was on the bench. Played Blackburn, I was on the bench, didn't play. Then we played someone else, Barnsley away. I remember me and Reese Brown was in the stands. Then I just said, Look, I'm, I just want to speak to this. I said, Okay, cool, Gaffer, please. Can I go on loan to play? Then he said, Okay, cool. Um, we'll, we'll review it and I'll speak to you. I think at the time it was Bolton, at the time they wanted me on loan. Yeah. I was thinking, Okay, cool, there. Um, 
it's not something that I wanted to do, but at the end of the day, if you, you need to go and play, you need to go and play. So then I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, let's try and get it sorted. So then it got sorted and then, yeah, they let me they let me go and go. So then that was kind of like, for, so it was from 15, on 2015 to 2016, I was there. I was there from six, I was there for six months. And then in January, from that time till 2018, that's when I actually played for, play for Blues again so um, like, I wasn't I was obviously still a Birmingham player but I was just never there you were out for a long yeah, time yeah yeah, yeah. So, so obviously the, the, the Bolton and Blackpool what what, what, the, what were the standouts for, from those two What was there anything you know any highlights that sort of spring to mind from that from those two clubs I was going to say yeah, you're so, on fire at Blackpool yeah. yeah so the Bolton one was just like if I like obviously now that I'm more older and I know I was thinking okay cool Bolton want me on loan but obviously you know when you're young if it like so I remember it was Bolton and Oxford United that wanted me on loan at the time so I remember I remember the Bolton manager called me and the Oxford manager called me and they said the exact same thing Bolton was pushing to get promoted to the championship Oxford United was like mid table club doing well doing well in the league so I remember I said to my agent at the time my agent was like oh, Bolton massive club. But knowing what I know now, I would have preferred to go to Oxford United because I would have probably played from then to the end of the season, going back in the summer with a stronger chance of breaking in. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. And then yeah. I went to Bolton, obviously because the manager said the same exact same thing as what the um, the Oxford United manager wanted. So I was like, cool, they're saying the same thing. They must really, really want me. Obviously, this is my first ever loan, like proper loan. Yeah. And I've gone to Bolton and I remember... Came on the first game, right back got injured, changed to three at the back, not playing with wide player men. I'm thinking, oh my God. So then training well, training well, training well, training well, training well. Not not playing, no, no starts. I'm, I'm going in the office, like, after what do I need to do to play? I remember I was talking to the Leos and like, Berman, look, I'm doing everything I can. I'm just not getting picked. And then it just got to a point where they just stuck with that winning formula with the three at the back. I remember I said to the manager, look, if you want me to play right wing back, I can play there, I can play number 10, I can play as a striker, I just want to play football. Yeah. But then I made sure every like, every day I was there on my loan, I conducted myself well and I trained well to the best of my ability just to know that, look, okay, cool, this boy can play, even though I'm not playing, this boy can play or any phone calls for future references. He's a good boy, yeah. he can play. Fair. And yeah, I remember. So I did that and I remember going back into Birmingham and Harry Redknapp was the manager. Yeah. But he didn't he didn't know who I was because I was young, I was away. But obviously yeah. they told him. So I remember I went to speak to him because obviously things have changed, starting to change. And so I was, you know, yeah. let me just let me just go and speak to them now because I'm getting a bit more mature now. So I was thinking, you know what, let me just go get speak, go and speak to them now. So I kind of know my place. I know what I have to do and I can come out fine. I think I still had like two years left in my contract or something like two and a half years left. So I was thinking, okay, cool. So I went to speak to him and he was just like, yeah, um, I think it's best if we kind of find a loan just to get more, just to play games and get experience. Obviously it hurt, but yeah. at the same time, I, I kind of understood. So I remember yeah. they went away, but I didn't get picked to go. And that was heartbreaking. I can't lie. Wow. I was hurt. So I remember I was training with the, um, the sports science at the time, training with them. And then when they came back, I was involved in the sessions and I was just, it was all that anger and frustration. I was just killing the sessions, killing the sessions. And Harry Redknapp called me and was like, look, like a lot of clubs have called, like, because there was like a couple of permanent transfers as well for me to go to the same league as well, or like go on loan. So I remember Harry Redknapp was like, look, um, like, no, like, you're, you're a good player. Like, that's very good. That's good science. A lot of clubs are um, show, talking about you, shows your promise and stuff. Like, why don't you think twice about going out alone? But at this time, I'm thinking, you know, like, now I need to play. I need to play games. I need to play games. Wherever it's, wherever, wherever it is, I need to play. So then that's how Blackpool came about. And I went there. Then, yeah, man, that's when, when like, I felt like a proper, like, first team player when I first went there alone. Yeah. So, so and then obviously that, that sort of, that came to an end and then sort of back on, back out on loan to, to Portsmouth. And you obviously had a run there and played in like a, Playoff semi final. How, how yeah. was that? Because I mean, that that's proper. You know, when you say you want to play football, I mean that that yeah. that is so, it. Yeah. That's it. I came. I came back. So yeah. So after the Blackpool season, I'm thinking, okay, cool. 
yeah, like I've, I've played 47 games, I've scored, I've assisted, like, I've played very well. Surely I'm going to get opportunity to play at Blues uh, the season coming back. I remember, I think I had one year left on my contract. So then done pre-season, everything. And then I was still thinking, you know, cool, I want to go on loan again and play again. Yeah. But they were like, no, you're not allowed to because obviously the whole embargo thing at the time. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it was just like, oh, okay, cool. I'm going to have to sit here and, then, and try and wait for an opportunity. So then played Norwich first game of the season. I remember I came and I scored. Thinking, oh, yes. Like, thinking, yeah, like, okay, cool. Next game, I'm going to get a start. No start. Well, next game, all this. And then I was just like, you know, now I'm done. So then um, January came. It was crazy. I remember January came. I've never ever spoke about like this. I remember at the time, um, the manager, obviously, you would know who the manager was at the time. Um, yeah. Obviously, he called me into the office and he was just like, um, a team wants to sign you. And it was like, oh, like, they want to sign you. So, oh, sorry. Uh-huh. Yeah, sorry. They're like, yeah, they want to sign you. I was just like, um, all right, cool. Like, who is it? Then he told me uh, it was Portsmouth. They wanted to sign me on like a permanent contract. Yeah. And, um, but I didn't want to commit to anything at the time because I remember I, had, I was I still had six months left. So I was thinking, okay, cool. Let me just go on loan and then see where everything is at at the end of the season. So then it was just like, um, oh, they, they, I was just like, I was just kind of wait, like, if I can do a loan, I'll do a loan. So then you were just like, okay. So then I remember I went to, to go to train and then I uh, went to go to train and then they're like, no, you're not in a session. I was like, what do you mean I'm not in a session? No, you're not in a session. So I said, okay, cool. No, that, no, no, no angle, nothing like that. Just said, okay, cool. No, calm. Okay, fine. Okay, done the session with the physio. So then, um, I think Palermo Club in Italy or something like that. They wanted to take me on loan. So I was thinking, okay, okay, cool. So then I remember the next day, uh, I went to tra- I had to train with the under 23s. So it was just, it was crazy. So I was thinking, like, well, like I just want to I'd rather just play. I don't want to commit to nothing now. I'd just rather just go on loan and play. And um and just yeah, just go on loan and play. And then in the summer that like, we can review everything. I don't want to commit to nothing now. Well, as because I still got six months yeah. to kind of clear my head and try and join my football, get back, yeah. and then and then we can go from there. So no, there was just like like nah, like you got. I was just like okay, no. But then obviously the 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 chairman and didn't know nothing about this was happening. So then obviously because I've got right. a very good relationship with the academy, I come through the academy. I remember I, I said to the academy manager and the youth team coach, I said, look, this is what this is what they're trying to do to me. They're trying to make me go here, and I don't want to go. Like, I'd rather just do alone. And obviously there's other options, but I'd rather just go on and play. So then um, they were like, so then like, okay, cool. So I remember like, cause like, I, you know, I've come through the academy and know me since I was a kid, good boy, never ever been in trouble, no no disruptions, nothing, never like, no, nothing bad to my name in that club. Like, I've just always been a young, respectful, humble, grateful kid, obviously for what they've done for me. So then yeah. the um, academy manager set up a meeting with Dong so I went to see Dong, and Dong was like, oh, Viv, like, how are you? Like, what's going on? I was just like, oh, I just want to play football to the end of the season. Like, I've done a season at Blackpool, played 47 games, I've come back. I just want to play. Like, I'm 20, I think I just turned 23. I said, I just turned 23 now. I've only played 10 games. This time, this time last year, I played already, so this time last year, I already played 30. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, okay, cool. Like, so then Dong, Dong sorted out the loan. I think it got to go on loan to Portsmouth, done that. It was a good experience, got injured, and then um came back, played the playoffs, but then we didn't get then we didn't get playoffs. We didn't get playoffs. Yeah. Um so, I mean I, I you know just, what? just Sorry, want to ask yeah. quickly, um, like I I suppose like, out of your time at Blues, um, who would you say was the most influential first team manager for you while you were there? Um uh, Gary Rout. By a country mile, or is it close? <laughs> yeah, yeah, by a country mile. Like other than yeah, by wait, yeah, it was the most influential because the other ones I wasn't really there. Obviously, yeah. for Zola, I was there for like a month, but like in terms of being there, yeah, it was Gary Rout for sure. Um, I suppose I don't, I I don't know how to ask this one. I suppose like after Gary Rower, obviously you're still in touch with the first team. I'm sure you still be chatting to people. Um. With, with with the relationships with kind of what the vibe around the place 
was it really different under certain managers? Like, was it better under certain managers than it was? No, I suppose. Because like, I wasn't de- like so. Because I wasn't there for a long time. So I wasn't there from so January. I went on loan to Bolton. Then I came back yeah. for like pre season. The vibe was all right. Like everyone was just fine. Everyone was just getting on with each other, getting on, and then. Um, then I went on, I left, I went on loan again. So I wasn't there like with Steve Cottrell and um, Steve Cottrell. I wasn't there. Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't know, like, I didn't know really what was going on at that time. I didn't, I didn't really know. But obviously it didn't, it wasn't, obviously they, I think they survived relegation that we survived relegation. Yeah, that Harry Redknapp yeah. kept us yeah, up. Yeah, Harry, that time. Harry Redknapp kept us up. So yeah, I remember talking to people. Everyone was just like, yeah, it's different right now. But obviously we're just trying to stay up. But yeah, no, I was so I wasn't there at that time. And then the only really time I was there before I left for a bit again was before I went to Portsmouth. And yeah. it, everything was fine. Like, everyone was getting on with each other. Like we used to do like team activities and stuff. Like everything was fine, to be honest. Yeah. Do you know, do you know what, Viv? It, 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 when you're saying about you wanted to keep your options open, and I think, you know, the fact you'd been at the club for so many years would, pro- would probably owe you that. But you, you from. Again, lots of people, lots of ex-players we talk about. I would say the vast majority have been dealt a pretty, pretty shit hand at one point by the club. And, yeah. you know, it's, you know, it, it's, I think, you know, it it probably is just football, but listening to it as a, as a first and as foremost, a fan, it's as hard a fan, to hear. It is, it is really hard to hear that. And, um, yeah, you know, it, it's just, it's disappointing and, you know, I suppose clubs are very, very quick to, if a big offer comes in, to get rid of a player. Um, but you know, when it comes to, you know, I, I think giving you what you what you wanted at that point, and I'm glad you got that that loan move. So, I, the word is that you were offered a, an extension to your contract after. Yeah, sure. did, yeah. Were you tempted, or did you just think, you know what, that, that enough's enough? Yeah, so like what I experienced in January kind of was just triggering over my head because like it was just like if I go into it, it was I don't really want to go into it because it was it was like it was it was a weird it was like a weird kind of phase yeah at the yeah. time like something that I never ever thought that this would kind of happen to me. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So then, um, and it was weird because like it wasn't the club or anybody at the club. It was just obviously the manager at the same time. And, uh, yeah. If, the reason why I don't, I, to this day, I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know what it was. Never ever caused yeah. no trouble. Never been disruptive. Never was late. Never got fined. Never. I'm in. Um, uh, what's it called? I'm in like Zoom calls with like a, a club chaplain and the staff all the time. Like, yeah. No, never that. And so then, obviously, to to go through that, and then I remember like. <laughs> I remember him saying, I remember the, the manager saying at the time, if you don't take this permanent deal, come the summer, we'll offer you a new contract and you'll be in your own change room and you'll be with the youth team training for the whole summer. And I was just like, wait, what? For what? Because I don't want to do what you want me to do. And the, it was weird because the players didn't know this. So the players were just thinking, oh, Vivian, just take it, just go. But I'm saying to them, no, it's far deeper than this. Like, it's not that. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So then, until I actually had to sit down and kind of explain it, and then everyone was like, oh, my God. So, like, it was just one of those. So then I'm, I remember I was just like, I remember, obviously, I came, I remember, so I had to meet with Dong, and obviously everyone everyone was sweet, like, calm. They they, they saw it out for me, got to enjoy my football and stuff, and and um, come back in the summer and kind of review everything. So I remember I came back. I did come back in preseason. I did come back. But then I just thought to myself, you know, I feel like now's the time I need to just become my own man and and kind of try and, f- like, just kind of do this myself in terms of, yeah. like, like they've given me everything they can up until this point. They've supported me. I feel like I need to become my own man and and just go in and, and find find my route myself. Yeah. And, like, step it and, and just just let me, like, just blossom and, and, and go and just try and figure it out. So I decided to leave. I decided not to take it. I think so, that's so un- understandable considering how it sounds the predicament was. And I just I'd just been thinking about it to myself, actually, like, you know, with the kind of Gary Monk time um that you were there. And obviously that Norwich game, you you scored what looked like it was going to be a winner, but then we were kind of robbed um 
at the end of that game, unfortunately. But cracking game, cracking weather, and a good start to the season, yeah, really. Yeah. But um, I suppose just two points uh, I want to cover quickly was like, what was that elation like when you scored that goal? Like, how did that feel? Because oh. the scenes were crazy. Um, it was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I remember was... you kind of running over to the stands as well. Yeah, yeah, like, I remember, yeah it was crazy. Just. You know, like all the hard, like the hard work. I remember from obviously saying, remember not going on pre-season that summer before I went to Blackpool, and then, and then saying, okay, cool, I'm gonna go to Blackpool. I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do my ultimate best, and I'm gonna get back and I'm gonna play. And like it was just all, all the hard work. It was like all that hard work for that kind of moment. Do you know what I mean? Especially like yeah. on the first, and to do it on the first day as well to get a goal on the first day. I just can't really beat that. I was just thinking, oh yeah. This is this is what all that this is what all that hard work was for, in yeah. terms of like taking that step back and just taking it as a a, pet, a positive mentally, working hard, improving, and just and showing that yeah I can be reliable, I can be trusted, and I can oppose my ability on games and do well. Definitely, yeah, and I think. I remember actually saying to my granddad after that game, um, like I, when we were just talking in general about the game, I, I, I said that, you know, you deserve a start for the next game. So like, like you say, you know, you said you were surprised. I think a lot of the fans were surprised that you weren't more involved in the squad um, in games after that game, considering you just, you just scored. Um, yeah. And you, you, you were effective when you came on the pitch as well. So it was kind of unbelievable that you didn't get yeah. into the squad really. But it was just it's one of the, like it's one of those obviously you can't like turn back time around, but obviously you know like it was just it was just one of those things. Obviously, like I, I just tried to like I said every day, try to just do my best, train hard, work hard, and also and be fit. Like if I wasn't in the squads, I remember I wasn't in the squads for maybe like nine weeks, six, seven weeks, and it was tough. Mentally it was very tough. Obviously, when you got like your family you got your family, you got your support, you got obviously like the staff there that you they've seen you grow. And like, I used to always go, like even till this day, I, obviously I still speak to them all, in them times. I used to have one-to-one coaches with my youth team coach and we'd talk and we just say, ask how I was and stuff. Yeah. And stuff like that kept, it kept me going. Yeah. It kept me going for sure, yeah. But so it's just one of those ones, yeah. 100%. And it must have felt horrible being outcasted from the squad, yet it, it kind of seems like there'd have been no harm in you being in the first team set up, yet you were kind of yeah. pushed away, in, even though there was no clear reason for it. Yeah. Um, so, no, that, that's, that's obviously really, really tough to take. So it's a shame that it kind of happened that way um, in the end, unfortunately. But then, obviously, you had, uh, after Blues, you went on to CSK Sovia, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Um, so how was that? Like, what was that like? You know, completely different country. That's just yeah, so different so, to blues. Literally. So I remember um, they wanted me in the, in the January window as well. So this one, they wanted me in the January window. Like I said, when I said, I just don't want to commit to nothing. I just want to go on loan, enjoy and review everything kind of in the season. So I remember them obviously like putting in a little bid, whatever. But I was just like, like I said, I just want to focus try and get back to match sharpness and just play and, and the, at the end of the season with everything. So then, yeah, when that came about at first, I was thinking, no, nah, like, I don't want to go. But then I started, Yeah, I remember I just sat there to myself because there was a few, I think it was CSK, Sofia, Panathinaikos, obviously some League One teams. I think I think one championship team wanted to pay, pay compensation. I'm not, I'm not too sure if that was like 100%. Like just a couple like teams in Scotland. So I remember... I was mother in Scotland and stuff like that. So I remember, like, I was just sitting there thinking, um, like, let me, I remember I just researched the club and I typed them in, I just done my research and then I sp- and then I was like, mm, okay, cool. Spoke to the president of the club. They came to London to see me. And then I was like, you know what? I remember speaking to my dad and I was like, you know what? Let me, let me take this chance. And obviously I wanted to play for the Nigeria as well. Yeah. Yeah. Thinking, okay, cool. If I can go to here and win like Europa League, surely that will be a contender to, to kind of get into the to the international team setup. Like that's what I always wanted to do. So I remember, like, I remember when I was saying to like Wesley Harding, I was like, oh, where's the thing I'm gonna go? You know, I'm gonna take it. It's like, sure, like, why don't you just stay? Like, stay. And I was just like, you know, what? I just think it's time to like just try and just find my own, like, just just go my, just try and just leave my comfort zone and try something different. So then, yeah, I just I took it. I went and it was good. It was a good experience. 
Um, I went there. Obviously, I wasn't fit because I came late. So then I yeah. had to get fit and stuff and then play. Obviously, the manager at the time, very expensive manager. He won the Champions League in 1991 with Red Star Ball Graves. So, like, all this, all those things were, like, kind of like, coming to me. I was thinking, okay, cool. Like, I can learn something different and I can improve. So, yeah, it was, it was a good, it was a good, it was a very good experience. So, so now, per, sort of, well, hope, well, coming at, at the end of COVID now. So, you, you're in, well, playing for Wigan um, at the moment. How, how's that gone for you? I know they're having a tough season, but how's it been for you yeah. personally? Oh, personally for me, it's obviously been a good season. Obviously, doing well and stuff. But at the same time, it's not. It's not. It's not going to be. It's not going to be enough if we don't stay up. Yeah. Like I feel like the most important thing is for us to to stay in the league, so that the club can obviously rebuild and then go again for next season. Because obviously, the what, yeah. what happened to them last year was obviously was very unfortunate and just upsetting. Really, the way everything happened. But yeah. Obviously, yeah. So the season's been good. Obviously, I had a, um, an injury where I tore three ligaments in my ankle. Right. Three injury. I've never been injured, so I was out for about four months. So I've just recovered. I recovered like last February. I just came back playing. So it's, it's going well. Just yeah. the, the, the task now is just to keep Wigan in the league. Literally, that's the, that's the task. Do you believe you can do that? Yeah, yeah, 100%. If we continue to do what we've been doing and apply ourselves and obviously... Everybody's confident, yeah, for, for sure, hundred percent. I think you've just, Wigan have just got new owners, haven't they? Um, yeah, yeah. So that must bring a positive vibe yeah. around the place and lift the squad, definitely. Yeah, there's, there's a, there's a lot. There's a lot of good young players in that squad as well. To be fair. Yeah, yeah, we've got. A, it's, it's, it's exactly. It's been good for the academy boys as well, because a lot of them are like 19, 20, playing 30, 40 games this season, mm. which would then set them up again for next year or wherever else they go. Like it's, it's just good in general. And obviously, to stay in the league will be will be a big bonus as well. Yeah, it's been unfortunate. I, I hope you do that, mate. Thank you very much. Absolutely. So, um, just sort of wrapping it up, and, and you know, thanks. Really appreciate you take taking your time because, yeah, you know, we, as I said, we, we've we've spoken to a lot of players, but not not many, I guess, of you know the current crop. Uh, yeah, and you were you were definitely that that name for a few seasons. That sort of the the guy that was going to sort of break through and you, and you certainly you certainly did that under row that that you know without a doubt but obviously blues have found themselves in how kind of put an interesting yet familiar position with a manager being sacked and uh obviously Bowie coming in and hopefully going to do a bit of a sal- salvation job um have you had any dealings with with Lee Bowie at any at any point or played against any of his teams yeah so um i played against he, they wanted to. He wanted to sign me in the summer for okay. time, and yeah. then he wanted to sign me again in the window of January. Wow! So like we, I know him very well. I've played against his teams, and obviously the way he sets up, good, good manager, good coach, and obviously he knows his his stuff. So yeah, I feel like obviously with time, and obviously obviously there's no, not really that much time now. But if he can kind of get his his infrastructure in now, obviously to the players, hopefully they take it on board. And, and they, and, they, and, they, and they win games and they stay up because it's a big club. It's a massive club. Yeah. Well, by the sound of it, mate, you might be back. I was going to say, you might try and sign <laughs> you back for Blues. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's, you know, it's, that's a, it's, a, it's a massive club, like big city, big club, big big fan base, a massive club. So like, obviously, it's, a, it's, obviously it's, it's, not, it's, it's not nice to see that they're obviously, again, fighting for relegation. Hopefully, this can be like, um, set up for something new now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, sure. well, we, definitely. We, we, we're definitely hoping for that. So, <laughs> what, what? One last question before before we let you go. Um, I mean, we, we're not in a we're in a better position than we were, but we're certainly not out of the woods yet. So, if, if from your time at Blues, what what player who, who one player that you played with during your time at Blues, if you could put that player into a side that is struggling and that would have the biggest impact. To really turn things around, who, who would it be? Other than yourself, of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what for in to put them in this current blues team? Yeah, in, into the blues yeah, team. Yeah. Which which, te- which player you played with? Do you think would have the biggest effect and positive impact on this blues this current blues side? Mm-hmm. Just sort of like okay. the best player you played with, really at blues. Djukovic is still leading the line there now. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he is. yeah, yeah. He's a fighter. Um, boy. Um. Ooh. 
as in me, as in I've played with Wolseen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, with you your your blues, time. Yeah. in my time. Yeah. Um. Ooh, that's a difficult. Um. I only won, yeah. Or can I say you that? only won. You can only have you, one. You can give on- honorable mentions if you fancy it. <laughs> Probably. Um. Why? Uh, I'd say Magoma. Fair shout. Magoma, yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, Magoma. When he, when he, uh, yeah, Magoma. And there's, there's others like, obviously, Michael, um, Morrow, Michael Morrison. Two players that we let go of and shouldn't have. Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, my- yeah, to be fair, I, I think both, both of them have got a, both of them would have a very good chance of getting um, into the, the current team. That, that's for certain. Yeah. Uh, um, so we never uh, should have let Morrison go. Never. <laughs> uh, who else? I'm trying to think. Um, obviously, Shay Adams would, would score. Oh, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll give you that because he hasn't been mentioned yet. I think and, uh, that that's someone that has to go into our little yeah, we're, kind of so we're, list. We're we've trying got. to build a team from ex players that are making recommendations. So we'll, we'll, we'll take your your Che Adams, and I think that's uh, that will be a very popular choice. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. so Viv, um, as as I said, th- thanks very much. Really, really appreciate. I mean, this has been really, really good insight around, you know, how how persistent you were to to make your dreams come true, and I think that. You know, hopefully some young lads will, will listen to this and, and to yeah. maybe sort of get a bit of inspiration because uh, and certainly the way that you've dealt with the adversity that you've had from time to time and, and dealing with it in such a way that, you know, it, it gives you a ton of credit. And I think we'll yeah, ultimately bring bring your awards as you, as you continue throughout your career. So really appreciate your time, mate. So thanks very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. OK, no, it's been great having you on, mate. You. Yeah, thank uh, you very much. Thank you. Right. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks a lot. No worries. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Cheers. Right. So that was uh, Viv Solomon Otterbo. A bit of a different one for us uh, this this time around. Um, but yeah, some really good insights. Unfortunately, another probably not not great story about blues. But I think other than that, you know, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, you know, we're, we're probably used to that. Hopefully, they're going to be fewer and fewer now that we've got a what feels like a good manager at the helm so um so yeah so anyway uh tom thanks a lot mate i in- enjoyed that i think there was some really good stuff in there 100 percent, yeah no uh, it's been a pleasure joining you as always mate indeed so right well we're not long to wait to, to the next game we'll definitely get some uh, content out there before before that happens and um yeah let's hope for the the manager's going to be working some magic on the training ground and get the the next sort of three points in the bag to alleviate any worries we have about uh, the dreaded league one. But between (laughs) now and then, stay safe and keep right on.